Hi, my name is Dan and in this video we're going to teach you about programming a clear flow access point. So there are several of these in the range. If you saw our overview video, uh, you should be aware about what products are available. So we have options between single band and dual band options. We're going to show you how to program a dual band access point in this video. Now, whether you're programming a WAP in in wall access point or an air, which is the ceiling access point, the programming process is, is identical, basically. So what we're going to do is power the unit up and then I'm going to show you the programming in interface. So. This is the, the process of how you would program just one single access point. Okay, If you're using the core gateway controller, that's a whole different um, uh, uh, business. So we're just looking at how to program a single unit at the moment. So we've got our power injector, um, which comes in the box with the air product, um, which we've connected via the mains. Um, and we're going to use the PoE port to connect the power into the access point. So we'll turn it over, the underside of it, we've got two ports, the LAN and the WAN port. You can actually use either pro for programming. I'm going to use the WAN um, because if we did decide we were going to connect into another device, um, then of course we can loop out from the LAN port into another one. So what will happen now is the unit will boot up. It takes a minute or so to do it, so do be patient. Um, now you'll notice as well I haven't connected anything to the LAN port yet. So this is the port, port where you would connect your, um, your network into, so from your router. For example, um, I haven't done that purposely, and this is something that's important to mention, is all the devices are all DHCP. So what that means is that they will take an IP address from the host network. Okay, so any device that's on a network uh, must have an IP address, and that's how communication happens. Um, so, but the way that we program these is we use a browser on the device that we're going to use for programming and the, the default IP address. So, of course, being DHCP, if we connect this device to a network, it will automatically get given an IP address by the host network, which we don't want it to do yet. Um, so on the back, there's a series of bits of information that we can use. Um, the bit we're talking about at the moment is the IP address. Um, so we don't want that to change because the process is to boot the product up, um, connect to its default Wi-Fi because it will start generating a Wi-Fi um, uh, via, um, a, 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 a via a smart device such as a smartphone or tablet or a laptop. We're going to show you using the laptop. Um, and then using the IP address which you insert into the browser that will bring up the login screen. Okay, so hopefully, while well, I've been waffling on, um, it should have booted up now. So um, you're going to open up your Wi-Fi um, uh, settings um, and search for the default Wi-Fi. So you're looking for an Air Wi-Fi, a WAP Wi-Fi, depending on what product you're programming. So if we look on here, yep, so we've got our Wi-Fi's. As I mentioned, it's a dual band, so they're actually going to be transmitting two simultaneous um, radio transmissions, one on the 2.4, one on the 5. For the purposes of this uh, programming process, it doesn't actually matter which one we use for programming. So we're just going to cl click on one of these. We'll just go for the 2 gig, just for no particular reason, and then click Connect. So at this point, I just need to mention, if you do encounter a device that's fresh out of the box at default, um, and it has a secured network, then the password is ANTI, A-N-T-I, or lowercase, and then 12345. So there was a small batch of devices that had a default password um, put on them, which they shouldn't have done, so it should be unsecured. Obviously, should you encounter this, um, that's what the password is. Um, of course, it's also worth mentioning if you've got a device um, that uh, has already um, uh, has already used, um, let's say you've programmed one of these already um, and you've had to insert the default password, of course your device will remember that password and you won't have to insert it again. Okay, so once we've connected to the default Wi-Fi, we're now going to open our browser uh, and type in the default IP address. So the default IP address uh, on these devices is 192.168.1.200 and it's on the back of every device. Obviously once you've used one or two of them you'll probably remember what that is. So and we'll insert that into the browser um, and then it will come up with our login screen. Okay, so an IP address is made up of four groups of numbers. Um, so the last part of the number uniquely identifies that particular device on the network. Um, the other three groups of numbers, they're called the subnet and that basically is, is set within a particular network. So, and for a device to communicate with that network, they all must all have the same subnet. Okay, 
So we're going to look at the um, the program. So we've got our login screen, as we can see. Um, also on the back of the device is the default password, which on every device seems to be in the world, seems to be admin. Um, so we'll just insert that into the um, field there and then click um, login. And now we've logged in. <clears throat> it's important to mention as well that we should always um, use uh, change the admin password um, because, of course, um, by default, if... Um, uh, if anybody knows that password, they could possibly get into your system. So I'd recommend having a generic default password that you use for, for your devices um, and obviously make that change. So looking back at the screen, we've now got a series of options. Um, we're going to program an AP. So you'll go to the wizard and you'll click on AP. And now you'll see we've got a series of options. We've got four stages across this programming. We've got our LAN settings, the Wi-Fi 2.4 and Wi-Fi 5.8, and then obviously a, a quick summary at the end on the finished menu. If we were programming a single band, there'd obviously be only one Wi-Fi uh, programming menu. Okay, so we're going to set the LAN settings first. The IP address. Um, this is a default IP address. Now, if you don't change it at this point, it will stay as DHCP, which means it will automatically get um, assigned an IP address by the by the host network. So, when we're setting the IP address, um, with this. In this particular case, we're actually leaving it as dynamic uh, or DHCP, um, but we'd actually recommend setting it as a static IP address so it's easier to find it on the network. So in order to do this, um, you need to scan the network using Thing. Um, it's one of the IP scanner apps that we recommend, um, or you could have a desktop version if you're using your laptop. So ideally, you would scan the network, um, you would identify the subnet so you'd understand whether your, your network is on 192.168.1, if that's what it is, um, and then you would choose an appropriate IP address that matched the subnet, which is the first three parts of the IP address, and then with a unique IP address, uh, with, or a last group of numbers, that doesn't clash with um, anything else that's on the network, because every device that is on the network obviously must have an IP address, but they all must be unique as well, um, so you don't have any IP clashes. You shouldn't need to change the subnet mask, but if you do, um, that only, it really only governs the number of IP addresses that's available um, within the network. So this is a, the most common, I think it's 256 IP addresses, um, so um, we won't change that in this case. Um, so we're obviously going to leave the IP address as it is as well. So we go to next. And now we're going to set our SSID. So the SSID is the name of the Wi-Fi. So when you look for it with your, your wireless device, that's what um, it'll be signed as. Um, so we're going to make a, a, a change to this because that's the default SSID. As you can see, the default password is there as well. Um, so we're going to change the SSID. We'll just call it Clearflow. Um, there we go. Um, so, but of course, um, that, this is the password that you'll give to users so they can access the Wi-Fi. Okay. So moving down, we've got some advanced settings. Um, you can actually set the uh, the device to uh, a 20 meg or a 40 meg bandwidth. Um, this literally is the physical width of the transmission. Okay, 20 meg is, is optimum for 2.4, so that can stay as it is. Um, we've got some options with our country setting. Um, this really only governs the number of manual channels that are available. So we'll, we'll set it to Europe. Um, and we can choose at this point whether we want to leave the channel selection uh, to automatic, which means that the device will choose the most appropriate place for it within the band. Or, as you can see, we've got a choice of um, uh, manual channels that we can choose. Now, this is quite a useful feature if you've got a lot of wireless devices using that particular part of the band. If you find you set up a device and it drops out, it might be that it's hitting something else, and that could be a baby monitor, it could be a, a wireless phone. Um, so you may want to choose a, um, a manual channel selection. <clears throat> and that can be um, a, a achieved or, or decided um, by scanning the airspace, and you can use a Wi-Fi analyzer app for that, which is quite useful, works really well on Android, um, so you can have a look for that one. That scans your airspace, um, and you can see what's being transmitted in that space on which channels, and therefore you can choose where an appropriate place might be. We're going to leave it on auto for the purposes of this, um, and, oops, and then we're going to go on to the next stage, and now we're going to program our 5 gig um, radio transmission. Now of course by default they've got two different um, SSIDs but we can uh, actually mirror the SSID with the 2.4 gig which is what we're going to do with this one and that will allow our devices to seamlessly access the 5.8 gig uh, where appropriate. Um, the difference between the two bands is the 2.4 gig is a much stronger transmission, penetrates walls better etc um, but a 5 gig you get better speeds on. 
So it's useful to have both, and that's why the, the dual band uh, APs are quite popular. But of course, if you have two different SSIDs for the two different transmissions, then your device has to choose which one to go onto. So you may end up finding the user has to manually choose the 5.8 gig band if they want to be able to access it. So we'd recommend seamlessly um, uh, mirroring the SSIDs and passwords, um, So which we've done. So we've got Clearflow, and we're still using Anti-12345 just because it's easy to use. Um, uh, um, the only difference with this as well is we can actually run the 5.8 gig on a much wider transmission uses more of the band we've got up to 80 meg um, which we'll use for this transmission so we're happy there with the settings we've done so when we click on next we've got the ability to just review this um, very quickly um, so we're happy with our IP address um, that we've set as a, as a we left it actually as a dynamic sorry at the HCP um, subnet mask we haven't changed our SSIDs and passwords um, are all there and we're happy that they're mirrored if you do make any minor changes like a capital letter in the wrong place or something of course they will be different networks so just be careful of that we're happy then we're going to click finish um, so and the final process is obviously the settings that we've made the changes to will then be confirmed so once that's finished the next pro the next stage of the process is to collect your LAN uh, port from your router into the PoE injector and your, your new access point that you've installed will now run with your network. Okay, so now the device is programmed, um, the, we've seen the settings have been saved, um, so now we're going to connect the network, or connect the network into the power injector, so into the LAN port, this device, this cable is now connected to our router, um, so it might take a, a few seconds, um, hopefully we'll see um, our new Clearflow um, network, yep, it's there, and we're connected and secured, which means we're now on that new network, okay, so the device is set and we're ready to go. That's in, in short uh, how to program an access point um, within the Clearflow product. So, um, but do visit our website for more information at antiference.co.uk. So, thank you for watching.